from producer to rock star, back to producer. It's going to be an epic moment for you. We got a new ITL. You're at Pensado's place. Hey, everybody. This is going to be a great show. Um, my career is 100% tied to this man sitting across from me. We'll get into that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. How are you, Herbert? Good, man. How about you? Yeah, you know, I'm, uh, uh, the wife, he's got everything Christmas in the house. I've seen. Oh, man. So I'm getting the Christmas spirit pretty good this year. Absolutely. Usually I get the Christmas spirit around mid-February, but I got it timely this year about a week away yeah yeah, 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 yeah you got yeah, any yeah. special plans uh yeah i'm coming to your house christmas eve <laughs> i'm not gonna be there oh well me and you, me and the rest of your family are gonna hang where out. you want me to hide the key uh i actually have one she oh, made good. one for me good. so <laughs> um but yeah good year a uh, couple things for you guys welcome good to see you let's uh make sure we say hello to our vintage king folks in the yeah. chat room right. is our friend darren penley there's his page up on the screen Darren, what's Darren. up? And always thanks as usual to Vintage King. And God, isn't this December 15th? I want them to all ask, ask Darren how to tell the difference between a, the different versions of an API 550. Okay. That'll but, keep them busy. But we'll do that right after this. Whoa. Oh, time for the giveaway, 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 giveaway. The Good. Neve 1073. It, what we're supposed to give away today? Give it away. You want me to give it away? I don't, I don't know how. Okay, so I'll give it away. I know how to keep them and use them. Well, I'll tell you what, I like this move you just made. That was a classic so, Vanna White. So before I announce the winner, Drew, can you give us a drum roll? You know who's in the corner doing our, our corner office. It's Drew, our CJ, not the DJ. <laughs> there he is, Drew. What do you what do you what do you good. All right, so now, Drew, I need a drum roll. Very good. Can you give us one? He's the drummer. Can you give us He's a, drum a real roll? drummer. The Neve 1073 winner goes to Word Life Productions. Word. There they are up on the screen. Welcome, congratulations, World Life Productions. We'll be wow. getting that to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to Vintage King for for sponsoring this contest. And uh, that's a big ass horse you got on you, man. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> and there's. There's a reference to your baby look, look lost. I'm, I'm looking at that horse. Anyways, so uh, as usual, we'll get to our corner office. We got your you got your questions in the chat room. We're looking forward to that. Um, I say, Dave, we get right to ITL. How about you? Let's do it. Oh, uh, it's good. Let's go. I'm Roll ready. it, Will. Hey guys, what's up? Um, this might sound like a boring ITL, but I wanted to bring this one to you today because I was in the middle of a mix uh, last few days and I realized that I was doing some things that might not intuitively come to, to you guys. Um, and and I started, so I started questioning myself why I was doing it and I realized that <clears throat> I did actually, for goodness sakes, I actually had a real reason for doing it. So what I want to do today is I want to show you how a lot of guys um, at this level, we, 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 don't, we don't accept effects the way they're given to us. We EQ the heck out of effects. One of the first people when I was coming along and learning, um, I had the privilege of, of, of meeting was uh, Mick Gazowski. And Mick was really famous for using the Eventide 2016 reverb, which I, I use a lot too. Um, and he would roll uh, a lot of the high end off so I'm told. I never asked him that, so I'm guessing. But to me, it sounded like he, he rolled high end off. I, I rarely heard anything above 5K. Sometimes it seemed like I only heard 4K. I started uh, liking, I started noticing I, I would like delay units like the uh, Lexicon PCM42 and the uh, uh, TC Electronics uh, 2290. And when I would compare their sound to the original, it seemed like there was a, a high end difference. So um, I just subconsciously started taking high end of, off of some, some of my effects. And today I was talking with Will, and I think the reason that that works is because when we were all analog, uh, analog and high end are not the best of buddies. And so during the analog days, um, you really didn't have to worry about 
high end competing the way we do now. Like now, just an average record it just has a lot, a lot more um, super ultra high high end. So when you roll it off an effect, it it leaves more room for the sparkle and shine. And I wanted this vocal to have kind of a a very intimate feel. It's a it's a, a real cool song. Uh, um, done by my friend Nick Cooper, who's one of the top, if not the top, vocal coach and producer around. So I'm gonna play a little piece of this. This is this is with the effects, and then uh, in the track, and then I'm gonna show you why I'm talking about all this stuff. When the sky, the sky is falling, and the earth slips from your feet. Pretty cool, man. Nick, Nick's amazing. Okay, guys, here's here's just the vocal solo with the effects, with everything. When your sky, your sky is falling, and the earth slips from your feet. Okay, now let's de let's deconstruct it. So let's take all the effects off. When your sky, your sky is falling. Okay, now uh, one of the more important effects is the, the two, there's two quarter note delays. Now, um, this one delay here, <clears throat> what I've got going on with that is um, your basic, um, you know, just delay, delay thing going on. Then you can see I'm rolling off a lot of top end looks like I'm starting if this is 1k this is 2k I'm rolling off top end pretty severely at 3k and low end pretty severely if it's at 100 200 300 400 400 somewhere in there and then on my little deverb guy I'm uh, uh, high frequency cut seven that's uh, not as sometimes I go lower let's go lower so this is with just that when your sky your sky is falling okay i'm not going to a b every single effect that's something you guys can do at home now um i felt like i needed a little more character to the um to the quarter note effect it, it felt a little too pretty so um so what I did was I, I, I brought my buddy Echo Farm. Now this is, um, uh, this is the same, I think this is the same plugin I used on buttons. So um, I'm reducing the bit rate, um, taking off a little bit of the top, and then I'm feeding that to um, this guy here. So we're, we're, we've got a pretty severe roll off here. And it looks like I'm rolling it from 600 and below and 3.5K and, and above. So, And then I'm feeding that to a, just your basic doubler. And this is what we've got with that. When your sky, your sky is falling. Let's use this, this both of them together, both delays. When your sky. Your sky is falling. You can hear that D verb. Okay, now um, I, I spent all this money to get me a Bricasti reverb. And I'm rolling top end off the, off the thing. That, that, that's just, that's almost criminal. I'm taking off everything above about 4K from the, from the Bricasti. When your sky, your sky is falling, and the earth slips from your feet. See, it just sits better with, with that frequency, that stuff gone. I don't know, I don't know why. It's, uh, I think, I, I think let's, well, let's make up a name for it. Let's call it the, uh, let's call it the Herbert effect. When you take high end off of, off of effects, it's the Herbert effect. 
Okay, and then last but not least, I've shown you this before. This is a little harmonizer setting. I don't think I did anything special to it. No. No, nothing special. That's a great effect, though. But we talked about that once before. Okay, so uh, real quick, just because I know sometimes you guys like to know, I'm using, um, I'm using this vocal writer, which I love. Check this out. When the sky, your sky is falling And the earth slips from your feet I'm, I'm, I'm about to um, uh, give Waves a quote for this thing and my quote's just going to be amazing so it's going to be pretty short. Um, main thing is this little slider right here, you got to pay attention to that. And then when you use this thing, make sure you send uh, to the side chain from your drums and from your music. Uh, I've got live drums and, and program drums. And then uh, here's my music and I'm sending that to bus 30. So you see what I'm saying? Bus 30 to bus 30. And, and then I, I, I narrow the range where my fader can move in a little bit. Great piece of gear. Here's the your basic de -er that I'm using. Uh, I love this, Brainworks. Uh, I'm adding a little top end to the vocal. Uh, our old buddy channel strip, a little bit of that. And then I'm, I'm, uh, I'm taking out some 2500, so um, let's mute all these. When your sky, your sky is falling. When your sky, your sky is falling When your sky, your sky is falling And the earth slips from your feet One quick thing guys, uh, because the backbone of the vocal, I want it to be intimate and, and the way I created that was a little bit of extra high end and so I under de it, but then it wasn't sitting right in the track. And so I felt like, um, I felt like I needed something in the track to support it. Here's my guitar. It just didn't have enough support. So um, I took a UAD plug in. That's this week's ITL. I'll see you guys next week and back to you, Dave. Was that a countdown for me? And uh, I hope you got something out of that. I want to leave you with a couple of things, guys. As always, even though I, I showed you some of those techniques with effects for vocals, um, the concept w will apply to any number of different instruments and any number of different things. and, and I forgot to say, when you come up with something cooler than I did, let me know so we can both benefit from that. But um, not mind, mind, you know, it's not mind-blowing like some of the stuff we've done, but very, very useful. I hope you, hope you really spend some time with that technique and, 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 and see the usefulness of it, because it really is a technique that a lot of us use. And a big shout out to Nick Cooper, uh, who produced that, and uh, one of the top vocal, pro well, he, Nick is the top vocal producer in the world today. and. Uh, uh, Incredible producer, writer, and uh, thanks, thanks to Dick for that. So Herbert, can I can I jump right in? I got to talk. Please. I got to talk. To Introduce our guest. Okay, um, Brett Epic Mazer. Uh, I, I, pretty much everybody I owe my career to is sitting at this table except ah, for Richard there, Wolf there is and, there is and Kevin Fleming. There and Kevin there is Fleming. Yeah. Richard Wolf will be a guest on our show really soon, but. Uh, Wolf and Epic were, were pioneers in the remix world. Um, I'm not sure that I can remember a big remix before Wolf and Epic and me uh, uh, did uh, all the Belle Bid DeVoe stuff. And um, Brett was like, man, he was like 16 or 17, just really young when we started all that out. Uh, Brett, man. Oh, 
Welcome. It's been a lot of fun. See you, it's, uh, yeah, good to see you. It's been fun kind of seeing, you know, my career, your career, my career, your career, and Brett guys. Um, um, I mean, we don't have enough time to name all his hits, so just the highlights. I mean, early hip hop, he was just, he, he was he was very instrumental. A lot of what you guys are doing today is a result of what Brett was doing uh, in the late 80s. Uh, incredible stuff, incredible stuff. And then uh, he got uh, uh, to a point where he wanted to branch out, so he started a little group called Crazy Town. They had uh, they sold a couple million albums mm -hmm. and had a number one Billboard hit with Butterfly. Mm -hmm. Toured, played Ozfest, played. Oh, you know, just just a huge career with that, and then so he says, well, okay, that's kind of fun. Now I'm gonna put together something else. So now he's got LAX, which is an incredible group. That they, um, um, I'm rambling on her. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Brett, man, what up? Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. <laughs> um, how, how important was your high school experience, your development? You described it to me, and just I just get jealous every time I hear about that. You went to the same high school my daughter did, but uh -huh. explain how that shaped you and, and got you to, to your start and how important it was to have those friends and influences. That's an amazing first question. I can't, you just knocked it out of the park with that one. It's huge. Um, I went to Taft High School in, um, in Woodland Hills in the Valley, um, and <clears throat> It was a huge flashpoint uh, in the in L.A. in the San Fernando Valley, at you know in the in the late '80s, um, and in my high school was you know uh, myself and and Everlast and Danny Boy from House of Pain, um, Ice Cube, uh, Brad, who's the drummer of uh, of uh, Rage Against the Machine. Um, uh, I'm, it, who am I missing? Oh, I mean, oh, Just, Divine, Divine Styler, who's wow. who's a who's a you know a hip hop icon. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people may may not know who Divine Styler is outside of you know the inner circle of of the the grassroots of hip hop, but you know he inspired groups like the Black Eyed Peas and Will I Am and 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 you know a lot of um, the Native Tongue movement back then and and. Um, there was just something going on, and it wasn't just in my high school, but especially on the West Coast, you know, where we had to fight so hard. It wasn't like today where everything is nationwide and worldwide instantaneously mm -hmm. online. There you had was to, no West Coast back then. No, you had to fight to get it, and, you know, and, uh, yeah, it was just, you know, it was hugely instrumental, um, you know, and forging what I was well, trying to just, do. Uh, you would say that, the, 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 that having that nurturing kind of uh, camaraderie um, was instrumental in, in helping you shape your career. I mean, you because you, you were doing stuff that had never been done before, and you turn around to this guy who apparently had good taste, mm -hmm. and, you, and what do you think? What do you think? No, nah, it sucks, man. You're not hard. This is, guy, this is what you got to do. I mean, mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm. it must have been, it must have been just an incredible thing because you came out of a household. Your dad discovered Billy Joel, right. managed Billy Joel, yeah. which I'm not sure that contributed a lot to your <laughs> musical well, career. Well, it definitely did. I mean, I grew up um, being in recording studios. Oh, um, right. So, uh, you know, it just definitely, it, it, I had experience knowing what it was all about. And I remember one of my, one of my dad's closest friends um, he was producing um, Kiss when I was a little mm -hmm. kid. And so I remember uh, asking my dad, what, what is a producer? And he explained to me that a producer is kind of like the director of a movie um, and that, you know, the producer almost ends up becoming uh, a member of the band but yet they get to go be a member of every other band that they work with as well. You said that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. And, and, and that's, that, that ended up becoming, you know, my, that had to be the measuring stick. <clears throat> and it still is today. You know, if I'm working with an artist, whether it be, uh, you know, I do a lot of writing too oh, on, yeah. on records that I, that I may not even be producing. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been fortunate enough to, to, to work with a lot of amazing producers as a writer as well. Mm -hmm. But either way, when I get involved with, the, with an artist, whether it be producing or writing, if we're not gelling, almost like we're 
in this together. Mm -hmm. I, it kind of, you know, it will reflect in the final product, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And, and I just, you know, I set that in my mind. That's what I wanted to do. Were you already, because you started, you started scratching and got your turntables at 13. Were you already, uh, you know, DJing it, but when you, when you had this epiphany? Um, yeah, well, you know, DJing and, and playing the drums started at, at roughly around, well, drums started a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. But, um, but DJing and, and, and playing the drums had a point where they were two separate things. And then they started getting closer and closer and closer um, into merging into, you know, what I wanted to do. And, uh, uh, and now it's like, W for, for instance, with LAX, with the new band, um, you know, I got my DJ set up on stage mm -hmm. and I got my octopads and, you know, my keyboard. And so everything I'm doing, even as, a, as an engineer, producer, as a drummer, as a DJ, is all happening on stage mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, credit it to, uh, to technology, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, it, I, I started really young and, 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 and uh, I mean, I was DJing at clubs here in L.A. at, at 16. I wasn't even old enough to get into the mm, clubs. And, mm. and I was told by the promoters I had to stay in the DJ booth. I was not allowed to leave the <laughs> DJ booth. How funny. Wow. Yeah. With, with your group, LAX, um, one of the things I've noticed, because we've worked so much together, um, you, love, you love drums, you love beats, you love what that does into, in a song, but, you, but yet... I think what's made you successful is you also love harmonies. I mean, you love mm -hmm. to hear the vocal harmonies. You mm -hmm. love, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's all music is, grooves and hooks, you know? I mean, so you got, you got all the building blocks you need. H how has that served you well in, in terms of, like, like even your drums uh, are, are, have a, a harmonic quality to them. It's, they're not just beats, uh, like, right. like, like your drums are in tune. Mm -hmm. Is that something that just comes naturally from within, or? Yeah, it, it comes naturally within, from within, and and not to mention, um, you know, there's many ways to to get to the to the end result. Obviously, um, there's more than t two ways to skin a cat. But the way I usually skin a cat is I start out with the kick drum, mm -hmm. um, and whether that be you know a single kick drum or something that I kind of mash together. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to end up predicting my snare. That's going to end up, and that's going to end up predicting my hi hat, if there is a hi hat, you mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Um, that's not to say, you know, I may I may start out with a bass line or whatnot, but but you know, in that order of things, you know, everything has to kind of match and sound good together, mm -hmm. you know. And and. Um Without that foundation, it doesn't feel like you've got a real song, right? I mean, there's something driving you to to do that, like like your workflow, like like you start with a kick, um, like Butterfly. It started that way. Um, actually, Butterfly started out. Um, Butterfly started out as yeah, as the beat, um, and it was just a typical you know hip hop beat. I mean, at that time that that we that we were doing Butterfly, um, a lot of the record was already made pretty much and it was um, it was definitely a, a combination of rock and hip-hop. I mean the rest of the album was already made. The Butterfly rest was, of, yeah. Right, the rest of the album. And, um, and we wanted to do something that was like strictly hip-hop. Um, mm. uh, because that's, you know, we started out as, you know, as you know, two guys making a hip hop record, and then what we wanted to do was, was, as a band, was more reflective of what we were doing in the studio, which was incorporating live drums, was mm -hmm. which was incorporating, you know, the guitars and the bass and 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 everything else. So, um, you know, that being said, you know, the the drums were there, and then, and, you know, we were. You know, we were close close enough to the guys from the from the Peppers, from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, that when we had this loop, we reached out and said, 
is it cool that we use the loop because we were going to actually just replace it with something, mm -hmm. you know? And we said, no, let's stay true to hip hop and use the loop. And, you know, they don't ever sign off on samples, right. you know? Right. And they said, use it. And we're like, you know what? Tribute to them. You know, let's keep it hip hop. Let's keep it raw. And, uh, and, uh, and you know, not to mention, you know, you, you brought up the song. You know, w there's a lot of songs that, have, that may have great production. Um, but at the end of the day, if something's really going to resonate, it has to be a great song. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. So Absolutely. let's you not said, forget that. Yeah. You said, uh, you said uh, the pain in your life is what produces great songs. So uh, uh, that was a great song. You went through a lot of pain in your life, I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. and another quote of yours I like is, um, 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 it's this or nothing. I mean, when, when you decided to go into music, it was music or nothing. There was no plan B. There was no... No, I there mean, was no plan B. I mean, I was, I was in my first semester of college, and, and, uh, and I got an opportunity to get an internship at SBK Records. Mm. You remember oh, SBK? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Charles Cop Koppelman. Koppelman. And, I got a, and I got an opportunity to get an internship there, and um, that was about the only thing that was going to allow my parents to be to sign off on me not going to college. Right. And, uh, and it's funny, when I, I was interning at SBK, which is, was EMI, yeah, and right. you know, um, I had just done my first remix for New Edition for any e Heartbreak. Oh, I'll be doing And um, so they have me like filing stuff and answering the phones and sitting at the front desk. And meanwhile, I got a song running up the charts bigger uh, than anything they had on oh, the charts as a record right. label, oh, that's you know. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah. It was cool. Um, I sometimes miss the remix days. You you, you miss those. It's like it's like uh, it, it seemed like it was it was um, when you have to come up with the entire idea yourself. I, mm -hmm. I don't have that gift. You do, mm -hmm. but the remix days allowed me to have ideas, but I could start with somebody else's creativity and and, and you know amplify that. And then, mm -hmm. then of course I learned everything I know about remixes from you and Richard. But uh, mm -hmm. Your workflow, uh, I'm, I'm fascinated by it because I've seen you work, and um, it, it just there's, there's some kind of magic involved. Like, are you still are you still predominantly using pads? In other words, are you still using like like programming your drums with pads? Are you programming them through a keyboard? Are you drawing them in? I, you know, I gotta I gotta be on pads. Um, I, I did plenty not on pads in the past few years. Um, we were just talking about mm -hmm. machine. Mm -hmm. You know, that's been a huge uh, a huge little breakthrough um, for me um, because it just seamlessly ties in. You know, my existing. Um, library of sounds um, and the way it works is so similar to you know an MPC or an SP 1200 mm -hmm. which is what I started out on mm -hmm. and it's just more enjoyable and the workflow is just smoother um, before that you know it's obviously you know playing on on a keyboard but I like the pads much better but you know at the end of the day it's happening up here first you know um, so the way you get to that point of what you're hearing in your head it's just semantics, you know, um, so, but it's just cooler and quicker and more fun being on the pads. And if you're not having fun, mm -hmm. you know. What impressed me about you was there would be nothing there. You would come into the studio, and back then I was recording a lot of the stuff too, mm -hmm. not just mixing, and you had such a unique, clear, defined vision of what you wanted to do. 2% this way, ain't going to happen. 2% this way, ain't going to happen. <laughs> yeah. You had just a clear, clear, clear vision of, of the sound, what are you, the emotion, the feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, are you just born with that? Can you learn that? Um, you know, I think uh, it's hard to tell, you know, because I only know my experience. Um, and I know that something has to hit me on like um, on a on a deep visceral level, which is part of the reason why I think anybody, like you mentioned harmonies, you know, why anybody likes harmonies, like, what is the emotion that, that you're trying to get? What does that evoke, you know? Mm -hmm. And that goes the same thing with, with drums or, or a song or, or chord transitions, you know? Um, and at the end of the day, I may not have known all the time 
<clears throat> exactly what I wanted it to be, but I knew the feeling that I wanted it to give me. And so when that feeling is hit, you gotta you gotta grab onto that and not let it. And and you can overshoot that. You know, mm -hmm. you can focus in on something too much and then, and we do it all the time as creative all people, the, right? All the time. So it's like you're there and then you, you want to try to make it a little bit better. And it's like sometimes you have to be your own critic and say, no, we're, mm -hmm. we're there right now, mm -hmm. you know, which is what kind of what we did with Butterfly. Mm -hmm. You know, we mm -hmm. were supposed to replace the sample, you know, but it's like, why well, do right. it? Yeah, yeah, right. Why do it? Because sometimes the access to technology can push you past the point yeah just because you can yeah right so yeah. You're all, you have to govern yourself you have to govern yourself mm -hmm. and you have to separate <clears throat> your professionalism and your job of what you're doing and the love of what you're doing mm -hmm. and try to stay on that love track mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. try to stay on that you know feel good train you almost have to become your consumer you do you yeah. have to become your consumer hmm. yeah. one thing I've noticed because I've been blessed to work with a lot of great producers and and, and at the end of the day they just have taste that, that, that uh, they have a, a type of taste that the rest of us aren't blessed with. Like, like they know, guys like Brett know what sounds good and, and, and how to make it work within the framework of all these other instruments and things. You've gone from, from hip hop, and, and when you were creating back then, there was no records to copy. It was all new. That's, mm -hmm. that's what was so amazing about what you did. Then you went a little bit to the rock. Now you're, now you're in, in, incorporating all of those elements into uh, a, a new band, LAX, that has a, a more dance influences, more electronic influence. Mm -hmm. Does, has your workflow changed? Has the process changed through, um, through those three periods? Like, let's call it the hip hop period, the rock period, and the, the, uh, the more pop uh, electronic period, mm -hmm. uh, does, does, does the creative process change? Does your workflow change? The workflow has definitely changed um, because there's a lot more synth programming involved um, and obviously as new software comes out. Um, mm -hmm. So y y you're constantly trying to make sure your, your workflow stays as quick as your your vision, you know. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, your, if your grandmama said uh, epic. Um, <laughs> how'd you how'd you make that new song on LAX? Mm -hmm. Give me like the the Reader's Digest version of that process for someone that's just learning and just trying to figure out what to buy, what mm -hmm. to get into. What's the What's your process for creating now? Okay, <clears throat> um, it I I like to start out with um, it's great when we have a concept, a song concept, so. Um, so we have a song called We Give No Fucks. Am I allowed to say that on yeah. here? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So we have a song called We Give No Fucks, um, which started out as, you know, uh, me and Antonella and Craig in the studio. And mm -hmm. one of the, Antonella would always, you know, we'd be clowning around and Antonella would said. Um, Let's grab quickly who Antonella is. Okay, Antonella Barba. Um, she is basically the front of LAX, and it's spelled L-A-E-X, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, actually, LAX, it was supposed to be the LA experiment. She's from New Jersey. Mm. Um, you know, I'm originally from New York. Craig is from New York. So, you know, at the end of the day, this was like the LA experiment. But, you know, she could be your, your LA mm. ex girlfriend, mm. you know, whatever, you know, LAX, the airport. The airport. I, I don't know. It yeah. just ended up becoming really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, Antonella. Um, she was a finalist on, on American Idol, uh, I think season seven or six or something like that. And uh, she's a bona fide superstar. Great singer. Um, the reason why it worked out with, with Antonella is she ended up moving to LA. And at the time, LAX was just Craig and myself. And it was just going to be like this underground, cool electronic thing that we were doing ourselves. But, you know, we had all these song ideas, and it was like, if we had the right girl mm -hmm. to yeah. front this thing, it would be amazing. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to just take any normal, you know, ex-American Idol finalist, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but she had an edge to her. You know, she got caught up in a scandal, which was completely idiotic mm -hmm. because pictures came out of her online. Um, they weren't pornographic or anything. They were just, she was, you know, it was mm -hmm. a little risque. And there was this little bad girl image that was tagged onto her, and it's like, well, that's perfect, perfect for the group. Perfect for the group, yeah. you know. Yeah. Not to mention, she's just a 
down ass chick, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, so in the studio, she would uh, back to we give no fucks. She. We, I forgot what we were talking about, and she's like, I give no fucks, you know? <laughs> I'm like, that's the song right there. So we got to, you know, so in doing that, so knowing that, um, uh, we, you know, I just started banging the beat together, programmed the synth, you know? It's kind of like this, like, glitch, glitch hop, dubstep-y kind of thing, you know? And where did the idea for the beat come from at that point? All you had was a phrase. Um, because I, I just, in my head, I'm starting, you know, I kind of had this like, you know, I just had this like groove in my head. And then I heard her saying in my head, you know, we give no fucks, you know, and it's just a, one of those stupid, can't get it out of your head songs, you know, not the deepest thing in the world, just something to have fun with. Fortunes are made for those things. You know, yeah. and, uh, and we love those things and, and, and so the the main beat starts, and then, and then we sit down. We start writing flows. We start writing raps. You know, and um, and the flows come first. You know, it's like how does a flow gotta go? Did you already have the hook at that point, apart from the line? Um, yeah, we we usually start with the hook first. Um, and so the hook is a combination of of her saying we give no fucks and me singing you know the melodic part of the of the chorus. So 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 you've got your pads, you've got your collection of samples that you've put together over the years. You've got right. the beat. Yeah. You've got the the hook delineated. Yeah. And and now now you're now you're you're using virtual synths to flesh out the the harmonic part. Yeah, using using virtual virtual synths and and. Um, and the drums, and uh, and once we have the the basics down, then we go back again, mm -hmm. and we start doing the tricks. We start doing the chop edits, um, you know, uh, maybe make some lyric changes here or there. Give me, give like for the new kid. Yeah, give, well, give actually, me uh, actually a good way for you to tie in some batter's box questions when you're talking about his tricks and stuff. So okay, you just combine it. Right, do better box right yeah, now? Just work it all in. Okay, well, let me add chop edit to my thing. There okay. you go. There you go. Because um, I'm a big BT fan, so. All right. So, are, are, are you ready for batter's box? I hope so. I feel like it can make me look really stupid. Yeah, I mean, I do what I do. <laughs> just, just, say, just say next. I don't want to answer that one. That's okay. what everybody else does. All right. Um, okay, synth bass. Um, Massive's awesome. Massive. Um, uh, Zebra's awesome. Oh, Zebra. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, like uh, like the buzzy kind of bass sounds that you hear in a lot of Euro dance stuff. Um, starting to get played out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. That's a good one. Okay. Um, uh, not starting to like it's. It's over. Got it. I mean, the, the feeling that you can get from that, that will never die. Mm -hmm. Let's start finding a new way to get that feeling. Man, I was listening to uh, Satellite Radio. Oh, I can't do that. i got to keep going. Uh, kick drum. Point and bottom. You um, get that through sample or through outboard gear? I would rather get it through the sample. Um, as soon as I start, got a, as, soon as, I, as soon as I have to start leaning too much on the outboard gear, um, I probably got the wrong sounds. Okay. So it's usually a mixture between an 808 or a 909, with you know something with the right point characteristic over it. 808. We'll never die. <laughs> That's true, isn't it? The most famous drum sound on the planet. Everybody knows. What I mean, an you, look, is. you. Let's go back to when we were, when we started working together. Mm -hmm. You know, I would, you know, I would have to blast, and we're at some of the top studios in the world at Conway, you know, uh, you know, Larrabee or wherever it may be, and it's like I would drive everybody out of the studio because I had to turn it up to 11, mm -hmm. you know, and make sure that that 808 was bumping the right way. What'd you say? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we we monitored loud in those days. Yeah. Uh, what do you, what's your go-to keyboard uh, synth? My go-to keyboard synth? It depends. I don't ever want to lean on anything too much on any one song. 
Oh. Um, the, the, the thing that you have to remember when working, especially on one song, is that you don't want to overuse one synth mm. because they all kind of color something the same way. So if oh, you have a cool. song completely laden with massive or, you know, I'll even throw in some, some reason synth, you know? Mm -hmm. You have to treat some of these the right way because they all have their own characteristics, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and if, you're, if your song is completely filled with one synth, it's... You know, it's what's, not what's the uh, what's the plugin you hit me to recently? Um, oh, Sugar Bites. Yeah, you're using that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're yeah. We we have an endorsement deal with Sugar Bites, which I love because we love them. And uh, I like that plugin too. Yeah, yeah. Sugar <laughs> the the Sugar Bites bundle is great and it's fun. I usually deal with them once um, once the meat of the song is done. Okay, uh, guitars, because I know, I know you're really good with guitars. Um, it's all about the twin nowadays, the Fender twin. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely trying to mic them up. Um, so you're using real amps as opposed to uh, emulations? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we'll combine it, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, we're going to mic it, and, and um, that's exactly how we're moving away. I'm giving a little secret away here. Yeah, but it's Ben Solder's plays. That's yeah, the whole point. This is the, that's, that's, you know, look for that in LAX. We're moving away yeah. from the buzzy bass mm -hmm. by adding mm. the guitars. Mm. And, 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 and while we're giving away secrets, you can give us the password for your checking account. That's, mm. that's something all, every, every guest does, right, right Herb? Yeah, we post it on the website. <laughs> yeah. right. uh, uh, I'm, I'm assuming the kick he, he, snares the same thing as the kicks, but snares, I, I learned from you, have a, a, a particularly sacred part of the process that they have to take care of. What's your snare? What's your go-to snare? It depends on the song. Um, <clears throat> it these day, and it depends on the time. You know, things uh, things have their trends. Obviously, snares have their trends, as do hi hats and kicks. Yeah. Um, but um, there's got to be some sort of clap or a snap over it, um, I think, audibly um, in there. But it's always been that way for me, you know? I've seen, I've seen Rhett say, hey, check this song out. I hear the first snare and turn it off. It's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I, you know, it depends. Uh, I, I've always liked a little bottom on the snare, mm -hmm. but not too much, you know? Um, I, I got a question while we... Drew, you get ready for a couple of questions for corner right. office. Yeah. You this um, musical journey, you know, the from Taft and that mm -hmm. influence and and how it happened musically and blended culturally into it became a career path mm -hmm. and then rock. And how do you feel about the scene that you're in now, where you're going with LAX, and mm -hmm. and how does it stimulate you as a writer and producer? You know. Um, like I said, it, when it started out, we were just basically trying to do more of this DJ-oriented underground thing. Mm -hmm. And that community is a very tight-knit, real community. Yeah. But at the same time, that can hold you back mm -hmm. because you end up being a slave to what you've done. Right. <clears throat> so we said, let's forget about it, just like everything else. Let's just do what we love. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. that's what it has to be about. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and um, you know, at the same time, I love radio hits, too. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and at the same time, I want to bring something that I'm doing to the masses. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to bring them into my world. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, so when I started out, let's, let's just, you know, if you want to talk about, um, you know, the early hip-hop stuff I was doing or... Or Bell Biv DeVoe. At the end of the day, you like you were saying, you have to, you have to, you kind of have to marry the right way your love of what you're doing mm -hmm. and the business of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. Did that's that just, answer your question? Yeah. Well, that's what I find in knowing you as long as I've known you, unique about your vision. Mm -hmm. That somehow you synthesize what's going on. You don't forget about hits, mm -hmm. like you honor that, mm -hmm. but you find a way to make that process feel new. Yeah. And so those, that kind of vision is always fascinating to me because some people are replicating. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Some people are looking over their shoulders. Mm -hmm. Some people are trying to look forward and can't see it. And some mm -hmm. guys have it and mm -hmm. look forward and they come up with something I'm, I'm excited to, to hear from. So I, I was just curious about your process. Drew, hit us something from the corner office. Okay, from 2 Radic. Uh, do you think rock, rap, and new metal music will be back on the charts? in the future and mainstream? 
Definitely. I think in one way or the other, it will definitely be back, and I think it will progress. Hopefully it does progress. Um, everything comes back around, you know, and it's just going to be a new it way. It almost never leaves. It just, it, it's just popular in more or less different times. Yeah, you know, it, it, the, the mixture of genres is always going to happen. Say that word again? The mixture of genres. Genres. Okay, got it. It's right. inside joke. Oh, okay. I can't say that word. No. <laughs> From Dark Pine Studios, uh, what part of your workflow that's changed over time was the hardest to change, but you should have given up sooner? Oh, great question, Dark Pines. Wow. What part of my rock flow? One oh, more time. Workflow. workflow. Like Work something that you your go to, but you hung on to it a little bit too long, probably. Um. You've grown and evolved. What part of that evolution was the hardest to 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 get to? Or to that I held on too long. Right, that you held on to too long. Mm -hmm. Um, wow, that's such a good question. I don't know. Probably what... me as a mixer. That was, that was one of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. You know what? Um, that would be, that would be it. 100% is that, is that when I started, mm -hmm. it was so easy to keep yourself surrounded by a great team, mm -hmm. like working with you. Mm -hmm. And as things became more accessible, um, as far as what you could do on your own, mm -hmm. in your own studio, mm -hmm. you found um, less opportunity to interface with those people that brought so much to the table, mm -hmm. you know, and so that you have to end up taking on, you know, so if anything, um, uh, trusting and relying on my own skills. Um, yeah, that's scary. In certain aspects, yeah. you know. Very real. Yeah. Well, yeah. is, is Dark Pines in North Carolina? I, we don't know. I can email him. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, question for Dave. How do you decide on what reverb to use for what application? I always end up going through all types, but can never decide what works best. What, uh, whose, whose, whose question That's is That's from Stephen Sheath. Okay, Stephen. Uh, Sometimes I do the same thing. I'll, I'll go through everything I own, but normally what I try to do is, is hear it in my head, like Brett was talking earlier. He, he hears the parts, and uh, like like the, the ITL we just had, um, I just wanted a clear reverb that didn't take up a lot of space, but that like did the things I want a reverb to do. Think about what you want to accomplish with the reverb, because it's not the sound of the reverb that's important. It's what the reverb makes you feel. So. Try and get the feeling that you want f to get from a from a particular effect, and then choose the effect that gives you that feeling. I, ho I hope that helps you. One more, Drew. All righty. Um, from Mr. Drino, uh, when mixing vocals, what can you expect from tracking engineers in terms of processing and tracking? Are there timing issues that need to be dealt with? I guess we can both kind of answer that, aren't they? From Mr. Drino. For who? Oh, for Dave. Um, well, gosh, you know, there's, there's, there's so many different, um, engineers. I personally, I felt like, like I wanted to know, like, like when, when I worked with Brett, he was a big SP 1200 guy and I wanted to know everything about the SP 1200. So if Brett had a problem, I could just go, oh, well, just do this. And I looked like a genius. Uh, <laughs> when MPC 60s came around, I learned those. I learned how to program DX 7s. I think a good engineer makes himself useful on every level. I, I hooked up um, a major artist. I hooked up a washer and dryer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think you should know everything about everything, and then, and then uh, be musical, be uh, humble, be uh, an asset, be quiet. Uh, cats like 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 Brett, like Epic, uh, they 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 want you to. Help them move the process along, but be transparent when you do it. There's times when they'll ask for your opinion. Don't give it. If, 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 if Brett would ask me, what do you think about this beat? I would never go, you know what, the snare could be this. And this it just destroys his whole train of thought. You, you just give encouragement. You say, man, it's really great. It's really great. And then 30 minutes later, he'll go, ah, I'm going to punt this. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything. I just encouraged. So engineering is a... a, a, a two-year course that I could expound on, but hopefully that'll give you some little 
little insights and concepts as to what a great engineer should be and what you should expect in the process. Expect more. One and more. when you don't get it, find somebody else. There's a lot of great engineers. Okay. Uh, well, I guess this could be for Dave and Brett. Um, from Mr. Drino again. What do you think about mixing a mono to check for EQ and phase issues, then mixing in stereo? You, you have an opinion on that? Mixing in mono and checking for phase issues? Are you in that to, no, like for EQ and possible phase issues, I guess is the point. I, it sounds more like a Dave well, uh, question to me. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you manipulate mono in the old days as good as anybody because that was, that was what we were trying to do. Was mm -hmm. We were trying not to have all this going on the sides and everything. We wanted to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Drano, um, 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 uh, you know what, let me do an ITL on that if you don't mind because uh, I think it's an important question, it's a question we've addressed uh, on several shows, nothing major, but I think that's something we should probably discuss. I actually made the statement a few shows back that Mono's dead. Don't worry about mono, but that was just to be funny. But you're, you're, you've got a great question, um, and and just to give you a hint, I don't really worry too much about mono. If you, if you, if you're uh, if you're a TV producer, are you going to worry about black and white? What your TV show looks like on a black and white TV? So I don't really worry about it, but there are uses for it. But let me do that in an IT. Oh, great question. So, Drew, you have one more for Brett specifically. I don't. Okay, cool. Now let me ask you a question then. Yeah. Have you enjoyed this walk down memory lane? It's, going, it's been amazing. Uh, it's it's great to sit here with you yeah, guys. Yeah, absolutely. God, when you think about, like I said, you add Kevin Fleming to the mix and we and Richard, and we kind of go back to the beginning of all of our careers. Yeah. I really. wish one day we could take a film crew and just watch Brett create something. It's like nothing you've ever seen, idea. Herb. It'd be a great <laughs> idea. And like when we mix, like one Would of our biggest hits. Yeah, 100%. One of our biggest hits was uh, Thought It Was Me. We actually had the two SP-1200s running live at, at, at the studio, and we're about to print, and he's still making changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'd been working on that mix for a while, and because uh, back then we'd create everything in the studio. There was nothing created at home. It was right. all created in the studio. Mm -hmm. I'm having sync issues, and all, uh, it's like torture, and then he's making changes. In fact, on the take that's on the record, you you actually played a couple of things while it was, while the tape was running to the two track. I did. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, it was that it was that thank cool. I'd love yeah. for people to see the process. Thanks for having me. Coming, man. Yeah. Certainly appreciate it. Yeah. I want to thank him for coming. Oh man, thank you. Well, I see him. I'm, I'm, we're working together, so, I so see let's a lot. Uh, <laughs> let's thank uh, congratulations to Word Life Productions for winning the 1073. Um, you want to speak to, there they are, they're up on the screen. So again, we'll get that out to you and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that for Christmas. Um, you want to speak really quickly because we need to go about yeah, uh, our little... Yeah, until Christmas. Uh, want to speak a little bit about what happened last week to us? We have to wrap. So um, about what happened with you two? I guess you don't. So you want to wrap up? And let's oh, go. you're talking about we were number nine on YouTube? Yeah, I mean, it's a, so let's thank, we want to thank you guys for the support. <laughs> I guess I didn't do that very <laughs> not, well. Not that well. So let, let's support, you guys have been so supportive of us. Last week we ended up breaking into, now this is a daily thing, so it, it happened on Saturday. Actually, on our, on Dave's, on Pensado Place Facebook page, Will had posted that we broke number 11. And then a day later, we got an email from Will that we broke into number nine right. ahead of shows like The View and other kinds of things, which was, which was really crazy. But that's, uh, thank you guys for the support for this show. What a great way to end the year. Um, and we're, we're going to try to bring bigger and better to you. So, um, and you also want to check out Brett's uh, website. It's la-x-e-x, la-e-x music. Dot com go there it's a very cool thing correct yeah go there and and then shoot over to our facebook page become a friend so that that we can get you all the information and uh there's a free download when you when you friend us on uh um, great on facebook and cool yeah cool january cool. it starts coming out thanks guys S say goodbye okay guys um we'll see you next week uh, uh that'll be our last show before the holidays and uh we trust everyone's gonna have a great holiday talk to you soon